School superintendents here in Florida are receiving new guidance from the state on how to handle COVID-19 exposure in schools. News for Jack's reporter Joe McLean joining us to explain how this new guidance works and Joe, what doctors say is missing from it. Right, yes, this is the graphic that was released August 19th by the Florida Department of Education. I know there's a lot to this graph, but it's basically separated into two parts. How schools should work to manage COVID-19, and down here, the process to follow if students are exposed to the virus. More than a week after most school districts had already started classes, the Florida Department of Education released this information graphic to the state's 67 superintendents. It's meant to help guide the districts in how to handle an exposure of COVID-19 with a priority on minimizing impact to the school or classroom. Though they're not labeled, these top tiles appear to be the main strategies for prevention, limiting impact, symptomatic people should stay home, high traffic areas should be cleaned often, and hand washing should be routine. The graphic also shows a flow chart of what to do if a student is exposed or starts showing symptoms. It boils down to this. If a student is exposed but isn't showing any symptoms, they can't return to class until they get a negative test, at least four days after exposure, or seven days have passed since the exposure without showing any symptoms. For a student who had a previous case of COVID in the last 90 days or is fully vaccinated, if they're exposed and don't show symptoms, they don't have to quarantine. But if a student is showing symptoms, they shouldn't return to school until they test negative and the symptoms go away. Or once 10 days have passed and they're improving with no fever in the last 24 hours. Or if a doctor signs off on the student's return to class. We showed this whole process to doctors. The Department of Education is acting as if someone who has tested positive in the last 90 days is vaccinated. They're, they're treating them um, as if they are a vaccinated individual in the sense that um, you don't need to be um, tested or do anything differently. So that is also a significant difference from the CDC guide. Joshi says without knowing the level of antibody protection, it's recommended that students who have had a previous case of COVID follow the same protocols as if they haven't recently been infected in the last 90 days, just as an added level of precaution. Another big difference between this chart and what's being recommended by the CDC, face masks. That's nowhere on here. Coming up at 6, we're asking medical experts about what they say is being left off of this strategy.